Good morning, boys and girls. I am glad that you have joined me at the pool today as we worship God. In fact, today our lesson is going to be how God is worthy of our service, and yet God is also worthy of our worship. And so what we're going to talk about is how we serve Him and that act of service is actually an act of worship. In fact, in the Old Testament, one of the words for worship means to prostrate. Another, which is to bow down. Another word for, for worship literally means to serve. And so we're going to talk about serving God today. And so in order to do that, there are some supplies that you can gather. Uh, I... Obviously, the most important supply that we can have is our Bible. Why? Because I want you to be able to check me to see if what I'm telling you is the truth. And so I want you to be able to get into your Bibles. We're going to start actually with a verse out of Colossians this morning. Colossians 3.23. And then we're going to go all the way back to the other end. And we're going to start in the first book of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 37, we've been talking about the life of Joseph. Joseph was, was hated because his dad made Joseph his favorite. And so Joseph was favored by his dad and got special treatment from his dad. And, and because of that, his brothers were jealous of him and, and they hated him and they uh, as you remember the story, they took him and they threw him down a dry well. And then when some merchants came by, they dragged him out of that well and they sold him. And today we're going to see what happens is, is Joseph gets into Egypt. Is, is he is taken to Egypt and then he's sold to a man named Potiphar. But back to, to our supplies. So we have our Bible. If you have some bendy straws, we're going to use those for, for an activity here in, in a few minutes. So bendy straws and, and some tape. And then finally, if you have a piece of construction paper and you can use that construction paper to make a heart, we're going to talk about how God wants us to serve Him with our whole heart. All right, so uh, as we get ready to, to, to dive into our lesson today, let's take a moment and let's ask God, let's acknowledge God's presence with us. God is always with us, and it's good for us to, to let God know that we're aware of that and then to ask Him to, to teach us and to guide us, direct us, and lead us. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank You for this day. We thank You that we can be together together. Lord, I just pray now as we look into your word that you would guide and direct, encourage and strengthen us. Lord, we just uh, pray that all of us would learn how to worship you by serving you with all of our hearts, wholeheartedly. Lord, we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we do that, quick commercial. Uh, we have been uh, doing a Bible study here on uh, Tuesday afternoons from 1 to 3. Uh, not a large group of us, so I uh, do want to encourage you if you would like to, to get together with us. It's not too late. Uh, we're going to continue probably right up to about the beginning of school. And uh, Tuesdays, 1 to 3, we're looking at the armor of God. Last week, we, we delved into a little bit of what it means. We dived into... That's what the word delve means too, is to dig into, to dive into uh, the belt of truth and, and, and how Satan is the father of lies. His very name means deceiver and, and God, by contrast, is the father of truth and his very word is truth and, and, and how God wants us in knowing the truth, to live lives for Him. And so that's a little bit about what we talked about last week. Come on out. I got some workbooks left. We have to do some activities. It's been a, been a good time. Okay. So we talked, to, I, I started out with that little intro that, that we're planning to, to serve God today. And yet we've prepared to worship God as well. 
And, and so let me, let me ask you, let me start with a question. What if I were to tell you that you've been selected to, to be one of the ball boys or the ball girls for the, the Grand Junction Rockies? They, they called me up and they said, do you know anybody that could do this? And, and I said, yeah, I, I know several people that would make excellent ball boys or ball girls. And, and I mentioned your name. And so they, they, they want you to come out and to, to go out and get the players' bats and to, to just interact with the team and just do whatever they need you to do. Or maybe, maybe you're thinking, hey, I'm not a baseball person. Well, you know, the, the Olympics in Tokyo were starting on July 23rd. What if I told you that you could go and be a, a torchbearer you know how going into the opening ceremonies, they have the people that, that carry the torches? And, and there's that, that flame, and then they use the flame from that torch to light the big cauldron, the big big flame there to, to get the Olympic Games going? What if I told you that you'd been selected to be one of those people? How would, how would you feel? Uh, do, you, do you think those would be, be exciting? Well, if you were selected to, to do any of those things, what, what, do you, what would it require you to do? Would you be able to, you know, run along and carry that torch? Would you be willing to wear the, the right clothes? Or would you be willing to put on that, that Grand Junction Rockies uniform and to go out and to, to pick up players' bats or to chase balls if need be and just interact with the team? What kind of job would you hope to do? Um... Well, let me, let me ask you this question. What if, what if when, when you, you, you became the, the ball boy or the ball girl for the Grand Junction Rockies and uh, a foul ball got hit and the, the manager told you to run it and get it and you just told him, you know, I don't feel like running today. Or if they needed you to pick up a bat and you said, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like bending over. What if uh, you were called to, to, to carry the torch and you said, oh, I don't really want to wear those clothes or, oh, I don't feel like running. I'm just going to walk. Or, you know. I don't even really want to do the flame. What if you, you thought to yourself, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do things half-heartedly. I'm not going to give it my best. I'm not going to try to give it my all. Instead, I'm just, I'm just going to kind of do it. I'm going to do things half-heartedly. Well, Colossians uh, in, in the New Testament tells us in verse 323, it says... Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for men. When Whatever we do, God wants us to do it wholeheartedly. Now... Are there, are there times where you and I, we, we, we do things half-heartedly? Can, can you think of some of those times? Uh, are, are there times maybe where we, mom or dad says, do, do you do your homework? And you're thinking, yeah, I'd really rather go outside and play. And so you kind of do your homework. You, you don't work at it with all your heart. You don't give it your all. Instead... You just scribble something on a piece of paper so you can get it done. Or maybe you're told to go clean your room. Uh, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for man. And so you, uh, oh man, man, I'd really rather go play video games. And, and so you just shove everything under the bed. And then when mom asked, did you clean your room? Yeah, I cleaned my room. 
Yeah, I kind of half-heartedly did it. Well, today we're going to continue in that story with Joseph. And and we're going to see how things are done either half-heartedly or wholeheartedly. But before we do that, back in, in Joseph's day, people served God at altars. They, they were special places constructed in honor of something special God had done. So they would put their sacrifices or gifts on the altar and they would offer it to God. Usually these, these altars were, were made of rock or stone. Sometimes they were round, sometimes they were square. But uh, they, they were made by man so that the, it could honor God. Now, here's what I want us to do. If you have some bendy straws like I do here, I want you to make an altar. It can look any way, but there's only two rules. Okay? You can only use straw and tape to make it, and it has to fit on your hand. So um, I am going to see. I had an idea here of what I want to do for my altar. And so we're going to see if I can get it to work. And if it works here, I will be excited. And so, you know, what I try to do on the videos, on the the introduction to my videos, and maybe this would be something good for your parents to know, or maybe they already know it, is I try to include a list of supplies. And so that way, they can know ahead of time kind of what I'm planning on doing. And, And so they can get some of the supplies to maybe participate. All right, we're going to see if we can get this to work here. I don't know if it will, because the hard thing may be to get it to fit in my hand. But I'm trying. And you know, the the cool thing about this is this is something that I'm doing that I can use as a way to honor God. All right, let's... Okay, well, it's... Oh, you know what I can do? Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to see if maybe we can get one more piece of tape here. Okay. And if you're working on this at home, I, I hope yours is coming along. If you haven't finished it, feel free to go ahead and pause and you can keep working on it. But I, I made my altar, and it's not going to stick in my hand. Because I, I didn't get everything balanced right. But I can hold it this way. But you know what? I'm going to use this altar to, to do a little demonstration. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to put my altar down here on the floor in front of me. And in the Old Testament days, and in Joseph's day, a person would come to an altar to worship God. Worship is just as important to us as breathing. So, I'd like you to stand in front of your altar and take ten deep breaths. And as you do so, I want you to think about what it means to serve God. All right, so let me see if I can get my altar here up. No, I'm going to have to maybe do it like uh, I'm trying to get it up here so that you can see it there. Oh, and it does not want to stand at all. Yeah, I really hope your altar got made a little bit better than mine. All right, so there's my altar. And so I'm going to stand here in front of it, and I'm going to take 10 breaths. And as I do so, I, I'm thinking to myself, what, is it, what does it mean to serve God? To do things for God. That's what to serve is. It's, it's to do things. And so what kind of things can I do for God? Okay, so 
as I thought about that, you know, I, I had some things that, that, that came through my mind that I, that I thought of. But here's what I want us to do now. Uh, service is action. And so when I say go, I want you to take 10 steps from the altar and do 10 jumping jacks. But you can only breathe while you're standing by the altar. So that means all the time you're serving, you have to hold your breath. So when I say go, do your service and don't breathe until you return to your altar. All right, so we'll, we'll do this together here. So when I say go, we're going to take 10 steps backwards. We're going to do 10 jumping jacks while holding our breath. All right, I'm going to see if I can actually do this. Ready, set, go. What demanded more of your attention? The breathing or the exercising? Well, I, I have to tell you, for me, it was the exercise. Because I knew I couldn't breathe while I was away from the altar. And by... <sighs> I'm still out of breath. And so it was more difficult for, for, it's easy to breathe. I don't have to think about breathing. It's something I do naturally. But to hold my breath and to go over there and then to do the 10 jumping jacks and then to come back here all without breathing, that was more difficult for me. What about you? Well, what might have been a way to do both at the same time? We could be allowed to breathe anywhere we want, or we could do our exercise next to our altars. That would be a way for us to both worship God, breathing and, and, and thinking on Him, and to serve Him. Well, God wants us to, to do everything that we do, He wants us to do with our whole heart as, as if we're working for the Lord and not for men. So our work, whether it's cleaning our room, whether it's going to school, whether it's playing with friends, whatever we do, God wants us to do wholeheartedly for Him. And, and, and so God wants us to reflect Him in all that we do. And we're going to see that today in the life of Joseph. So Joseph, we're going to start in... Uh, Genesis 39.20, we're going to go through 41.49. And so because of that, I'm really going to more tell you the story than read it right out of the Bible. But you, you can go back and you can, you can read it yourselves. Well, our Bible story today tells us how Joseph served and worshipped God wherever he was. He served with his whole heart because he knew God was worthy of his service. Joseph had been sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers who hated him. Now, at one point, Joseph ends up as the steward, the household manager for a man named Potiphar. Now, he's still a slave, so he doesn't have the freedom to, to do what he wants. But over time, Potiphar trusted him and gave him more freedoms. Well, Potiphar's wife tried to get Joseph to sin with her. And when Joseph wouldn't do that because it would offend his master, and even more than that, it would offend his God... She got mad at him and made up lies. And so Potiphar took Joseph and put him in jail. Now, when, Potiphar, or when, when Joseph was the, the, the household manager for, for Potiphar, do you think that was exciting? 
might have been, might not have been. But Joseph, he, he did it well. He did it with his whole heart. And because he did it with his whole heart, God blessed Joseph and God blessed Potiphar. Well, so Joseph, he's, he's thrown in jail by Potiphar, even though he hadn't done anything wrong. All right, so put your wrists together and put your hands in front of your face and spread your fingers apart so that you're, you, you look through them as if you were in jail. Now, Joseph is in jail not because of anything he had done. Well, the thing he'd done is he'd been truthful. How do you think Joseph felt? How would you feel if you got put into jail for something you hadn't done? For being innocent? Would you complain? Would, would you talk about how unfair that was? I might do that. Um, so keep your, keep your jail bars up until I tell you to let them damp. But I'm going to put mine down so that you can see me as I continue the story. In jail, Joseph remembered that the altar of his worship was with him. That God was with him. That, that wherever Joseph went, God was with him. And he served God. He worked for God with his whole heart. Even when he was unjustly in jail. And Joseph, he even helped the jailer. Joseph knew that God deserved his wholehearted service no matter what happened. So he chose to do the right thing. Well, Joseph one day was called to help Pharaoh, the, the king of Egypt, figure out his dreams. And with God's help, Joseph was able to help Pharaoh. Remember that, that Pharaoh had had a dream. He had a dream where there were seven skinny cows and seven fat cows. And, and the seven fat cows were, were eaten up by the seven skinny cows. And Pharaoh called everybody together and asked them what it meant. And, and nobody could figure it out. And, and, and Pharaoh had another dream where there were seven very seven big stocks, healthy stocks of grain and seven shriveled, dried up stocks of grain. And those seven stocks of shriveled grain ate up the seven big healthy stocks of grain, but it didn't affect that grain at all. And Pharaoh was baffled and everybody else was baffled. They couldn't tell him anything that made sense. And, and so Joseph was called for. And Joseph, uh, excuse me, Joseph was able to help Pharaoh. Joseph served God faithfully and others saw that God was with Joseph. You know, Joseph was invited by Pharaoh to live in the palace. In fact, Joseph is made the, the second in charge of the country right behind or right under Pharaoh. But you know, Joseph still wasn't free. He wasn't able to go back to the land of his father. And yet even in, in this new position, Joseph served God wholeheartedly. The amazing thing about Joseph is that he served God whether he was mistreated or whether he was treated well. He did exactly what our Bible verse today says. Whatever he did, he did with his whole heart for the Lord. Joseph wasn't just trying to please a jailer or a boss or a king. He was serving God from the altar of his heart. He was worshiping God by serving God. And the God who was worthy of Joseph's service blessed Joseph in return. All right, is, and I want you to think about that. That whatever that you are called to do this week, whether it's chores, 
whether it's to care for a younger brother or sister, whether it's to obey mom or dad, whether it's to go swimming or to have fun, that whatever we do, we have a choice. Am I going to do it half-heartedly or am I going to serve God? Am I going to worship God by serving Him wholeheartedly, by working for the Lord with my whole heart? Here's what I want us to do. Um, I want you to hold your hands in front of you and put them together to form a cup. And then close your eyes and imagine all the ways you can serve God, that all the ways that you can serve God will fit into your hands. Imagine that all the good things that you can do and all the obedience in your heart will fit into your hands. We're going to close our time together with a simple prayer, recognizing one thing about God who is worthy of our worship. We will simply tell God, you are worthy of our service. And when we pray this prayer, lift your hands up to God as if you're giving Him all the ways that you can serve Him and obey Him. Let's, let's do this together. So... Go ahead and close your eyes and let's lift our hands with, with all of the things that we can do and with all of our obedience to God. God, you are worthy of our service. Amen. I hope that as you go through your days, you go through your week, that you will ponder, that you'll think on how Joseph served God whether he was mistreated or whether he was treated well. That whether he was free or whether he was in slavery. And that you and I each have the opportunity to serve God as well. I hope that you have a good day, a good week, and I hope to see you here on Tuesday, right here in the chapel at 1 o'clock, that we might learn how to serve our God even better. Have a good day and have a good week.